Good evening, Saints. How are you doing? We bring you greetings from the Church of God Mission in Jonesboro, Georgia. Uh, I am Pastor Micah Dobbins, and prayerfully you guys are all doing well this evening. Um, we want to go over a couple of things as we begin. Um, for those who want to attend our live services, uh, we will be meeting uh, the first and second Sunday of next month at the Lovejoy um, Convention Center. Uh, so if you guys want to come out, you know, make sure that you reach out to us so that you're able to come for our live services. We'd love to have you. Also, be sure to hit um, like on the video, share, and, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that we can help with the algorithm and help get the word out for others to hear. Um, with that being said, we're going to open up with our opening prayer, and we're also going to cover our prayer requests. You can leave them in the chat so various members can pray for you, even um, at a later time, long after this video. But we want to make sure that we remember um, the bereaved families, those that have suffered loss. One of Jemiah's co-workers actually lost their little sister. We want to remember them in prayer, uh, as well as the sick and shut in, those that are feeling well in their bodies. We want God to heal and to deliver them from their affliction. So we want to make sure that we're covering one another in prayer, as well as the saints that are scattered abroad. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. And then after our prayer, um, we're going to go ahead and have our announcements. Father, we thank you for blessing us to come together this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your people, Lord, who are able, Father God, to be lights, Father God, in this world, that are able, Father God, to be your hands and feet to reach those that are lost. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would not only bless, Lord, us as the saints, Father God, but the Lord, remember the word tonight. Lord, may it go forth, Father God, and accomplish all that you sent it to do. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would build up, Father God, our most holy faith, Father God, that we may be able, Father God, to step out, Lord, and trust you, Father, that, Lord, we would be able, Father God, to speak boldly and declare your truths, Father God, into a dying world, and that, Lord, we may be able to win the loss at any cost and bring those, Father God, Lord, over, Father God, out of the ways of sin, Father God, and into your way of holiness. Bless, Father Father God, Lord, our pastor, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you keep Pastor Larry uh, and strengthen Pastor Larry, Father God, heal her body, Father God, like only you can. And, Lord, when we pray for her, we pray also for Sister Arlene, Father God, and, Lord, others that may be sick, Father God, children that may have colds, or, Lord, maybe their sinuses are affected by our weather. We just pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would heal like only you can. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, Saints, we're going to go ahead and hear our announcements. Thanks for tuning in to COG Mission YouTube channel. You can meet us here live on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. If you want to give to this ministry, you may do so by Cash App at Cash App COG Mission 01 or PayPal. Just type in Church of God Mission at att.net. For more information about this ministry, to share your testimony or prayer concern, please contact us at cogmytestimony at gmail.com. You may also visit our website at cogmission.org. All right. Praise the Lord. So with that being said, we are um, glad that you guys are here this evening and we're going to go ahead and get ready to get into um, our scriptures for today. So if you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn with me. If you haven't already seen the title, um, the title is Be Reconciled to God. And um, we're going to talk about the reconciliation today. So first thing we want to go to is, um, like I said, if you have your Bibles, go to Isaiah the 59th chapter but we're going to read verses 1 and 2 and the bible reads as follows it says behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear so i'm um, opening up we wanted to deal with reconciliation and to reconcile is to be made in right relationship, uh, to make peace, to come together um, to opposing parties where one was obviously um, wrong. 
So what happens uh, when we read in the scripture, we see that God created man in his image and his likeness. And he created a place for man in the Garden of Eden. And God was well pleased with um, all that he had created. And man was in a very uh, good estate to where God would walk and talk with him in the cool of the day. Like God would literally come and talk to man and man was able to fellowship with God. Well, we know the story. Adam and Eve ate of the fruit that they were not supposed to. And eventually man was plunged into sin and there was a rift, uh, a separation that was made. And he told man, in the day you eat of it thereof, ye shall surely die. Meaning that there was going to be a spiritual death that would take place and also a physical death that would follow. And man was spiritually dead um, from the point of Adam's transgression. So the Bible is telling us here in Isaiah 59 by the prophet, he said the Lord's hand isn't shortened that it cannot save. Um, it's not that God can't reach and, 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 and change your situation. It's not that God can't um, move on your behalf and bless you. It is neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. It's not that he's hard of hearing. Okay, but we find the answer in verse 2 that is the problem. The crooks, if you will, of the situation that separated man and God. It says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sin separates us from God. And when Adam and Eve sinned against God, because sin is, is a willful disobedience to transgression or whatever God's law is. When he told them, don't eat of the fruit. And they ate of the fruit, they had sinned and disobeyed God. Therefore, they were separated from God. And likewise, all of humanity, born in, shin, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, are separated from God and desire reconciliation. They desire to have a relationship with him because God desires it. And he allows the Holy Spirit to draw us by his goodness to give us the desire. Or as the scripture says, it's God who works in us both to will and to do. So I wanted to go over that verse first. So there are those that are out there that are wondering why um, it seems prayers are bouncing off the wall. If it seems as though, you know, God is not um, intervening in your behalf um, and you're kind of feeling left out on an island sometimes, check in. Pray and ask God, is there anything between you and him? And Lord, forgive me if I've sinned against you so that um, you can have right relationship with him. And we're talking about being reconciled to God. And we're going to go over those scriptures tonight that will help you um, in your process of reconciliation. So I wanted to point out that, 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 that the Lord, he can hear. His hand can save. But sin separates us from God. And he hides his face from us at that point. When we go to John 8, 21 through 24, Jesus speaking. Um, and this is when he was speaking uh, to the Jews then he says then said Jesus again unto them I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins whether I go ye cannot come so Jesus let know I'm going somewhere I'm, I'm, I'm not going to always be here in the flesh on this earth with you guys I was sent for a purpose to die for the sins of the world I'm going somewhere okay and when I go my way you're going to try to seek me you're going to die in your sins and if you die in your sins, where I'm going, you can't come. Want to hold on to that. Verse 22, then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whether I go, you cannot come. So they, they start to understand he's talking about death. Because anywhere he travels by foot, we can follow. We can find out where he went. But he's saying where he's going, we can't come. Is, what, is he going to kill himself? And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So Jesus um, responding back to them. And he's basically letting them know that, listen, if you don't believe in me, if you don't profess your hope in me and, and, and follow me, because he says that, that if we believe in him, you know, we believe in him and we follow him, we'll obey him. And we know him, we'll know the doctrine. Whether it be of God, we'll be able to grow in grace. And I'm just paraphrasing a lot of these other scriptures that are very familiar at the COG mission. So he's saying that, listen, if you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. If you don't accept me as Lord and Savior, if you're not willing to follow me, you're not going to make it in. You're not going to go to heaven. I'm from above. You all are from beneath. I'm going back. And you're not going to see me in peace if you don't believe that I am he. And when you believe in him, you obey him. 
you follow after the laws that he gave. So Jesus let them know that if you die in your sins, you can't come where he is. And we've already expressed how sin separates us from God. He said, your sins and iniquities come between us. I'm not hearing you. I'm not, I'm not, I don't even bother praying unless you pray in a prayer of repentance. And now we see Jesus tell them that if you die in your sins, you can't even get to heaven. You can't go where I'm going. When we look at St. John 3 and 3, Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus um, what we would call the remedy to help man in his fallen estate. It says, John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now we're kind of getting to some of what is, well, really just the heart of the matter. You must be born again. You got to be saved. You have to repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And when you repent of your sins, you're, you're, you're letting God know that you are um, sorry with a broken spirit, a contrite heart, and godly sorrow for the wrong that you committed and that you want to be made right. And you want to be um, in him fully in Christ, fully surrendered. And you want Jesus to come into your heart, be Lord over your life. And you're willing to die to this flesh and this world. And you want to be a willing participant. You want to follow whatever God has for you to do. Well, well, at this point, you must be born again to even see the kingdom of God. You have to confess and forsake sin. And born again um, is something that people have tried to make uh, just a repeat after me. Just say what I say. All right, now you're born again. But we're, we're, we're letting you know that, no, you have to have godly sorrow that worketh repentance, not to be repented of. You know, it has to be a godly sorrow. Um, it is a conscious decision. You're not going to get hit over the head by a man up in the pulpit, and then you just jump up and like, oh, I was saved. They just hit me over the head. I blacked out. I woke up, and I was made righteous. No, 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 no. You got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Confess and forsake sin. And it's believe that Jesus is Lord. And you have to walk in newness of life. So Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. If you want reconciliation to God and you want to be reconciled to God, you must be born again. You have to follow God's protocol. You have those out there that are claiming that they want a relationship with God or I have a relationship with the creator. I know my father. I know the spiritual, you know, all these terms they use out here, but they bypass Jesus. They're not born again. They're not saved. They haven't confessed and forsaken sin. I assure you they're lying. They, they don't know God. God is not dealing with them. You just read earlier in Isaiah where he says, your sins have separated me from you. I won't hear. So they need to quit with that. They need to come back to the all cleansing fount because Jesus said, no man comes to the father, but by me. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we recognize Jesus as the only way to the father. He said, I'm the door. So if he's a door, you're not getting up in the kingdom in the house. Let you come past the door. You got to come through by way of his son, Jesus Christ. So we wanted to cover that thoroughly to make sure that you have full understanding that you must be born again. If you go to Romans 10, 9 and 10, still speaking about being born again and, and becoming saved. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is why we say you must believe and you have to confess. Um, a lot of people want to do, you know, the little closet thing where, you know, I ain't never confessed Jesus. I ain't never professed Jesus. I never asked forgiveness for sins. I just told God, you know, I want to be good. No, 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 no. We're reading scripture. Romans 10, 9 and 10. We read John 3 and 3. To help you to understand that you have to confess and forsake sin and you can be and how you can become born again by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, acknowledging the death, the atonement that he paid for you. And this is a serious matter. Juxtaposed to those who are saying that all you got to do is just, you know, start trying to live a better lifestyle. The Christian has an understanding that when we confess and accept Jesus, there is a change that is made. We have passed from darkness to light. From, 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 from death to life. And there is a difference in the life of the believer when they are saved. It is not um, a worldly sorrow. Because um, the Bible talks about godly sorrow versus worldly. Worldly to be re-repented of. You, you'll find yourself doing it again. Godly sorrow um, will bring about a change to where you're going to start to walk in newness of life and become a new creature in Christ. And we're going to cover that. I just wanted to give you that um, so you can have that understanding. So when we get to Proverbs 
28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. It says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So we must confess and forsake sin. Okay? If you try to cover it, if you try to say that, you know, I'm not a sinner, then obviously, you know, you're, 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 you're lying to yourself um, unless you become born again. Um, I know there are those that read into, I believe it's First John, and it talks about it. We say we have no sin. We make him a liar with none of his. That's in reference to those people that claim that they've not sinned. They've never sinned. You have groups that are out there now. A lot of them are in the, um, the Pan-African community saying, oh, I was born a winner. I was never a born sinner. I was born a winner. I never sinned. You know. And these are the people that would qualify for that scripture. That if we say we have no sin, we make him a liar. The truth is not in us. But if we confess and forsake our sin, he'll, he's able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says it in that same verse. And then it goes on to let us know in um, the second chapter, these things I write unto you that you sin not. That he don't want you to sin. He wants you to overcome. He says if you do sin, you have an advocate. Jesus can help you so you can grow in grace. But by the time you get to 1 John the third chapter, he's telling you that the seed remaineth in you, that whosoever has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. How God's seed remaineth in you and you cannot sin because you are born of God. So you want to become born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to go through justification and then sanctification so that you can walk in newness of life and that you can um, show the way of holiness to those in the world and help them to see. Because the Bible declares, be ye holy for I am holy and without holiness no man shall see the Lord. You want to make sure that you're following the commandments of God and the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you into all truth. As Jesus promised that he would. So you got to make sure that you don't cover your sins or you won't prosper. But if you confess and forsake them, you will find mercy. Now that we have the understanding that we were dead when we were in sin. That there was no life in us. That just as God told Adam and Eve in the day you eat of the fruit, you should surely die. Um, we were dead in trespasses and sins, the Bible declares us. So let's read that in Ephesians 2, picking up at verse 1. It says, and you have he quickened who were dead and trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh and the children of disobedience. So I want, I want to break this down so that we have full understanding of the salvation process and how we're being reconciled to God. When you were dead, you were alienated from God. From the commonwealth of Israel, from the blessings, from the promises, as Gentiles even, you, you were separated from God. And it says, you have he quickened. To be quickened is to be brought to life. It says, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You used to be dead in trespasses and sins. It says, were, past tense. But you were quickened. He says, wherein in time past, letting you know, your former life, before being born again, the person you were before, he says, in time past, you walk according to the course of the world. We did what the world did. If the world said, grow your hair a certain way, you grew that style. Because that's what the world did. If the world said to behave a certain pattern, you follow that. You walk according to the course of the world. Because that's what the world did. When the world listened to a particular genre of music or did a particular thing, you followed the world. Why? Because in time past... You walked according to the course of this world, according to who? The prince of the power of the air. Loved ones, the prince of the power of the air is Satan, the devil. He goes about seeking whom he can devour. As a roaring lion, he goes about with the power of suggestion, trying to compel men to sin against God, and he sets traps and he traps men when they walk in disobedience. It says the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, meaning he's still working in the world and in those that are disobedient to God. And that spirit, just as we read about an unclean spirit coming out of a man and he goes through dry places seeking rest and can't find none. And he says, I'm going to go back to my house. I'm going to go back to that man I just came out of and bring seven other spirits. The devil is going about trying to get the saints to forsake or fall off so that he can indwell them and cause them to sin against God and end up in a devil's hell. All right. So the prince of the power of the air and, and, and the course of this world is the spirit now that is ruling them that work in the children of disobedience. 
And this is why the Bible declares that hell hath enlarged herself to greet thee at thy coming. Why would hell have to enlarge herself? Because hell was created for the devil and his angels. But those that choose to walk in disobedience and then allow him to continue to rule over their life because they don't receive Jesus Christ at the appointed time, then they are going to get hellfire as a reward. Therefore, hell enlarges herself to make accommodation for the souls that will be there that should have never been. But they didn't repent. They didn't receive God. Therefore, they have to go because Jesus said it earlier. We read it. If you die in your sins where I am, you can't come. He made it very plain. I hope we're breaking this down tonight for you. So it says that where in time you walked in the past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past and the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So Paul said in the Ephesians, we all used to have our conversations in sin. None, none of us can come out and say, oh, I was born just from the womb to the tomb. I was born a saint. I was holy. I came out righteous. No, 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 no. There's nothing to do with good. No, not one. You were born in sin. If you're righteous and holy now, it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing you did. The salvation is a free gift. We know that. But then you begin to walk in newness of life. You obey him. You follow him. All right. So there are those who feel that, you know, oh, no matter what I do, I'm always going to be a sinner or we're saints and sinners. That's the line the devil told it. There's a distinct difference. Read first John, the third chapter. He makes a difference between the children of God and children of the devil. When we look at the text here, he's clearly saying that we all had that conversation in times past. Fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh and the mind, and we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We used to be in time past. We walked according to the course of this world. So Paul is making a distinction that there's a difference between where we were and where we are now. We're not that. In another verse, another uh, book, he tells him, forgetting the things that are behind. I reach for the mark of the high prize of the high calling. We, we're moving forward. We don't want to stagnate our growth. We don't want to stay in the same place. Jesus himself said that no man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is worthy of me. Don't put your hand to the gospel plow and then decide you want to look back and go back. Keep moving forward. Or you'll be like a dog going back to his vomit, as Peter said. Or like a pig going back to the mud that it came from. So he says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. You were dead in sin, but God quickened you. He brought you to life by Jesus Christ. By grace you're saved. And what does the Bible say? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? You can read in the Proverbs. He that winneth souls is wise. We need to be out here trying to win souls for the kingdom. Preaching and teaching the gospel so that people can be saved. All right? Because why would it say he that winneth souls is wise if we can't win souls? We should be able to win souls, saints of God. He let it be known. By grace are ye saved. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you are born again, you're raised from sin to royal honor. Jesus said, if any man come to me, me and my father will make our abode with him. We'll come in. We'll sup with him. Meaning that you'll be in communion. You'll be reconciled to God by Jesus Christ. And they'll have fellowship with you. All right. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When he was speaking to the churches, we read Revelations. Open the door. He's trying to come in. He's knocking. Let him come into your heart and into your life and let him be a blessing unto you. It says that we're able to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is why the saints have a high time in glory. This is why uh, it's just, it just the longer you serve him, the sweeter he grows. It just fills your soul and you can sing songs of Zion and joy. You can be praying and it feels like you just, just left this lowly land of sin because you're having a high time in Jesus. It says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So we know there is nothing man could have done to have saved himself from that pitiful estate. 
It is only by God. The Holy Spirit draws us, and upon the Holy Spirit drawing us, because Jesus said, no man comes to me except my Father draw him. So he used the Holy Spirit to draw us unto him, and as he draws us unto him, he says, in the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You need to make a choice when you hear his voice, if you're going to repent and follow, or you're going to harden your heart, like the day of provocation. Like them people that died in the wilderness. You have a choice to make. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. So when God is pulling on you and you feel the pull and the desire, you don't want to ignore him. You don't want to, he says to quench not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit by attempting to be in disobedience. It is not your work that saves you. It is God only by way of the Holy Spirit. But faith, because it's by faith and by grace, that's how you get in. It is but faith without works is dead. So once you've been born again and you have faith, it should produce a work in your life. You should be different. You should walk in newness of life. You shouldn't be the same person you were before. If you see that you're the same person, it's time to come back to the all cleansing fountain. You need to repent again and, and do your first works over. Get your life right. And we're going to give you scriptures to help you understand that we're supposed to be different. And that we're supposed to reconcile others to Christ when we're saved. You didn't get saved just so you could escape hell and just sit amongst yourself you got saved so you can try to win other souls to the kingdom you were given a ministry of reconciliation second corinthians 5 17 through 21 says therefore if any man be in christ this is going to prove the point that you're not supposed to be the way you used to be no more that you can't just be running around talking you still sinner man it says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new so the bible says if you're in christ you're a new creature you're not who you used to be you're different. Old things are passed away. They died off now. Behold, all things are become new. It says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So first he reconciles you by way of Jesus. Then he gives you the ministry of reconciliation to try to win others to Christ. To wit, so to understand that, Christ, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So again, the word is doubling down. That God was in Christ, drawing the world, winning the world. He's just reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. They can get saved if they repent. You got those out there that are of the reformed mindset or the Calvinistic mindset doctrine teaching that there's only a limited amount that can be saved. He didn't die for everybody. That's a lie and the devil told it. He died for all. Is it for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? That whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It says that in through one all men died, through one all men should be made righteous. Through Christ, all means all. So now we're seeing where it says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Our job is to be sharing this good news, sharing the faith to help reconcile them to Christ. We want to win the loss at any cost. We want to see lives change. We want to see those that are drug abusers cleansed by the all power and blood of Jesus. We want to see those that are, that are whoremongering to, to quit the whoremongering. Those that are in adultery, whatever you're into, we want to see you change so that you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus, so that you can walk in newness of life and you can reconcile others. You can share your testimony to win others. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if you're in Christ and you're a new creature and you're claiming Jesus is inside of you and the Holy Spirit is inside of you, what sin do you have to commit? What power, if greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world, what power does Satan have that he can overtake and overthrow the saint? If you're following the Holy Spirit and Christ is within you and God is on your side, if God be for us, who could be against us? We quote these scriptures. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. We quote these scriptures. But with the temptation, God will make a way to escape. It is God who works in us both to will and to do, but he can't keep you from sinning. Something's wrong with that theology and that doctrine. It's a, 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 a false narrative. It has you believing that, that you're still bound, but you're free. No, 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 no. Jesus came to set the captives free and to save his people from their sins. 
And we fully believe Jesus is able to save us from the guttermost to the uttermost. He's able to get us out of whatever we're into and cleanse us and help us to walk in newness of life. But you have to make sure that you're following him, that you're looking to him, that you're trying to live that holy life and not allow the enemy any room to work in your life. Isaiah 55 verse 6 through 9 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is letting them know, listen, you need to seek me while I'm near, while I can be found, and call upon me while I'm near. We don't need to be hard-hearted loved ones and trying to fight against this thing. We need to be obedient to it. He said, let the wicked forsake his way. If you're doing wrong, you need to forsake it. You need to cast it aside and say, I no longer want to partake of this thing. If you're running with the gang and the gang is always trying to get you to rob and steal and kill, you know what the Bible says when he says, my son, consent not when sinners entice thee to run with them. Don't go with them. Say, no, 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 I forsake that. I got to let it go. I renounce that. If, the, if it's the, the, the girlfriend or the boyfriend is continuing to get you to fall into sin and into fornication, we need to forsake that way. We need to renounce that. We need to let it go. He said, in the unrighteous man, his thoughts, if the enemy is bombarding your mind, you need to keep your mind on spiritual things. He said that if you keep your mind stayed on him, he's able to keep you in perfect peace. Jesus said, the peace I give you ain't like the peace of the world. So we need that peace today. We need to be forsaking uh, uh, the unrighteous ways and the thoughts. And then he said, let him return unto the Lord and he'll have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God understands our frailty, our humanity. Jesus walked away before us. He's willing to reconcile you. He was willing to abundantly pardon. But you have to have this understanding for him to abundantly pardon. Verse 8, he said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. My ways aren't your ways. <laughs> you can't come with your own way of salvation and your own thought process. Well, we believe different. We all believe that way, but we believe this way. When he clearly tells us to let no division be amongst us in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. He clearly tells us that, that we don't need no isms and schisms in the body. And that we don't need to have division. But we need to be on one accord with one mind. It's one faith, one body, one Lord, one baptism. You know, why people coming up with these different doctrines is because somebody ain't allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them into all truth and trust that it's one mind that God is working in each of us. He says, just like the heavens are higher than the earth, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And this is why it is folly and foolish for these men to try to uh, bar people out of the kingdom or try to come up with these philosophies on what it is for you to be saved and to be right. Just follow the word. Stay with the scripture. Jesus said you must be born again. I got to be born again to make it in. I'm not looking for any other way other than born again the way of salvation. If the Romans said confess with your mouth. And, uh, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. I'm believing in my heart. I'm confessing with my mouth. Because they say you do this you shall be saved. All these people trying to have you jump through these hoops. And give you all this extra to be saved. You better follow the scriptures. As the Bible directs it. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth as the Bible claims he will. If he says that how much more should Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Or we see where the apostles laid on hands and they received the Holy Spirit, others received them. Or that the Holy Spirit fell upon them at the preaching of the gospel. We're going to believe what the Bible says. We're not looking for man, all that extra Terry. Stay down. Just keep rolling on the floor. He coming. Oh, he's almost there. We, we sticking with the scripture. And Paul says... Do they need to have an interpretation when speaking in an unknown tongue? I'm, we're looking for the interpreter. Where's the interpretation of this thing? Stick with the scripture. Because when you allow yourself to get off, see, that's what God said. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My way is higher than your ways. You're trying to figure it out. No, no, no. Trust God. Trust his process. And he'll help you to figure it out by and by should he decide to open your understanding as such. When you look at Isaiah 1 and 18, because it said the Lord will abundantly pardon and that he's looking for us to reconcile with him. He says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God is saying, come on, let's reason together now. Who, who wouldn't love a God like that? That's willing to reason with you. That's willing to hear you out, willing to share what it is that he, he desires. When you look in the scripture, 
And you see Moses. And God is telling Moses, okay, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. And he's like, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Lord, I, I, I have a speech impediment. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not eloquent in speech. You, no, send somebody else, Lord. The Lord spoke with him. <laughs> he said, well, what's that in your hand? Take that rod of your hand. You know, throw it down. I'm making a snake. Show Pharaoh these signs. God um, has patience as the husbandman for the fruit of the earth. He, he has patience with us. Praise God for it. He could have just snuffed us all out. But he loved us so much that he sent his son. And the Bible says that those he foreknew, he predestined. He foreknew, meaning foreknowledge. He knew, okay, these ones are going to be willing to, 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 to follow. Uh, I'm going I'm to give them what they need. I'm going to send them the power. I'm going to help them because they choose to follow and obey. So he says that though your sins be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He's able to clean you up no matter what you've done. But people need to understand that this will for God, for all to come to repentance... Is universal. He wants you to repent of your sins. He's not, because uh, he said, have, have to have any pleasure that the wicked should die? And rather they not repent, he would rather you turn away from your wickedness. He, he, he would plead with Israel, why should I have to destroy you? Because you're going to keep going and, and going after idolatry and, and doing the wrong thing and whoremongering throughout the earth. Why? Why, Israel? Why can't you just repent and turn to me? With your whole heart, you know, he's pleading with you and he's pleading with the sinner man today because the Bible says he allows the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. He allows it to rain on the just and the unjust. So they can't say God ain't never did nothing for me. No, no, no. There's things that are good that happen to the sinner man and all good things come from the Lord. So you have to realize that God is, is, is showing you mercy in hopes that you would recognize that it's God who has saw you through or blessed you in them situations and that you will repent and change. We need to have this understanding. If you look at 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the Bible says that you know a, a day with the Lord is like a thousand, and a thousand is like one day. That's why his ways are hiding our ways. His thoughts are hiding our thoughts. And it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. See, earlier in this chapter, it talks about those that say, oh, when is, when is he going to return? They've been talking about that since our fathers. Jesus is going to return. But he was letting it be no. God ain't slack concerning his promise. He didn't forget. He will reward every man according to his works. But he's long-suffering to us word. He's patient, trying to get us to get it right. He's not willing that any should perish, but it all should come to repentance. Because when he created man, he created man in the image of God. He gave man a soul. He breathed the breath of life and a man became a living soul. And that soul has to spend eternity somewhere. And don't believe these religions trying to tell you that, oh, when you die, that's it. You just go back. You just go to sleep. That's it. That's the end. No, no, no. When you die, you're either going to wake up in hellfire or wake up in paradise. When you look at the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And one lifted up his eyes in hell. Lazarus was carried into the bosom of Abraham. He was in a place of comfort. Till Jesus comes to return and take us all to be with him in the kingdom. When you go to 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6. 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So he said he gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time and God would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But he said there's only one mediator between God and man and that's Jesus Christ. You're going to have to come by way of Jesus. Don't let these folk trick you into thinking you can get to God without coming through Jesus. You can sit there and say, oh, well, you know, Moses had the law. I'm going to do all these things that Moses said do because I don't really know about that New Testament in Jesus. You better accept Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, if you want to see God in peace. Because if not, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Jesus said he committed all judgment unto the Son. Y'all better recognize who Jesus is. It was always about Jesus. It was never about us. It was always about Jesus because by him all things consist and all things are created through him, for him, and by him. And this is why Jesus is calling. Matthew 11, we're talking about reconciliation. It says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He's the mediator between man and God and he's calling for you to come into his rest. To die, to cease from doing your works of the flesh. 
And as if God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's calling. He's desiring for you to come and for you to be reconciled and for you to repent and to change. And this is important because there are many out there that feel as though nobody cares. Nobody loves him. God loves you. And the Bible tells you what can separate us from the love of God. There's nothing that can separate you from the love. Sin will separate you from God, but his love still remains. And that's because his ways are higher than our ways. We can't understand that. We feel like, well, if we separate, we don't love the person no more. No, 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 no. God is able to still love the sinner, man. But he separated himself when they decided they want to commit sin and not follow the ways of holiness. And being in hell is going to be an eternal separation and that lake of fire and brimstone, the final destination from God, my Lord. So when we go to Proverbs 1, picking up around verse 22, the Bible says, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So, so we see that he's saying, how long are you simple ones going to love your simplicity? How long are the scorners going to delight in scorning and fools hate knowledge? How long are you going to continue in errors of sin and folly and reject the fountains of living waters? How long are you going to continue to walk in darkness when, when, when he's trying to shine a light in your life and help you to see? But the Bible said men love darkness rather than light. He came to his own, his own received him. Now, how long are you going to continue in that way? Turn you at my reproof. Why don't you turn to my correction? He said, I pour my spirit unto you. I make my words known unto you. We're talking about being reconciled to God. God is desiring for the sinner man to repent and to be reconciled. He says, because I have called and he refused. See, that flies in the face of that whole doctrine. God going to make you do. No, 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 no. He's giving you opportunity to get saved and get right. He said, I've called and he refused. Not I refuse you. You refused when I called you. You decided to rebel and disobey when I called you. The fault ain't on God. It's on man's refusal to obey and follow after him. He gave you free will and a choice. He said, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. God is stretching out his hand and you're going the opposite way. That's why when he said my hand ain't short that it can't save, you've been ignoring his hand all this time and now in the end you want to cry out to him. When you've been walking in disobedience, no son, no man. You got to repent. You got to do them first works over. You got to get it right. Should he give you opportunity? Because the Bible says pre-adventure that God will give them a space of repentance so they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. He's, they're taken captive by him at his will. See, once you in the snare of the devil, you're a puppet. He can take you do whatever you want. So he's letting you know if God gives you a space of repentance, you need to take advantage of that space. Draw nigh when he's near. Don't, 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 don't forsake him when he calls you. He says, I've called, but he refused. I stretched out my hand, no man regarded it. But ye have said it not all my counsel. You ignored all that I gave you, and with none of my reproof. You didn't want my correction. He says, I also will laugh at your calamity. See, now... God says, okay, you rejected me. You don't want my truth. You moved on. You don't want my counsel. You don't want my correction. You want my preachers to shut up. You try to shut them off. You don't want them around. Okay, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. Because there's going to be a hard road up ahead. There's something up the road for you. The devil's coming. He said, I'll laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear coming. He said, okay, when you're afraid, I'm not. I'm going to mock you. I ain't coming to save you because you didn't want me, remember? And the only reason why you want to save me now so you can go, go save you now so you can go right back into sin and keep doing what you're doing. God knows what's going on. So he's like, uh-uh, you're not going to take advantage of the situation. You're going to repent and you're going to follow me. Or I'm going to mock you when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. He said, all that's going to happen to you because you rejected me. He says, then shall they call upon me. That's when you're going to want to seek. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early. You can get up early in the morning ready to pray for them. He said, but they shall not find me. For they, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. He said, because y'all did all this. No, I'm not coming. You're not going to. No, I gave you ample opportunity. I stretched forth my hand all day. 
I gave you my reproof. I gave you my instructions. I gave you my counsel. You know the way of holiness. You were blessed enough to be brought up in the church where people are telling you the truth and helping you to put away sin, helping you how to dress holy, helping you how to be upright and follow after God. But you didn't want that. You wanted what the world had to offer. You rejected my counsel. You didn't want to be reconciled to me and made right. You just wanted a temporary blessing so you can keep it moving and keep doing what you're doing. And he said, therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You're going to reap what you sowed. You're going to eat of your fruit that you planted. He says, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Don't let this be a testimony. It doesn't have to be. You can repent. You can believe the truth of the gospel. You can get saved. Don't let this be a testimony. Don't let the turning of the way of the simple slay you and the prosperity of fools <laughs> that destroy you. He says, but whosoever hearkeneth unto me, whoever listens, whoever obeys, whoever decides to seek me, he says, whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. If you want to have peace and you want to dwell safely, you got to follow after him. You got to be obedient to him. And when we turn to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, Jesus speaking, it helps you to see the heart of the Father and his desire to reconcile and how he gives his ministry of reconciliation to go forth and try to get others to reconcile and to come be a part of his great plan of salvation. And when you go to Matthew 22, it says in, in verse 1, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Mm. So he's breaking this down in parable. He's like, look, you know, the kingdom of heaven. God is like the king preparing the wedding. I'm his son. And he's sending forth servants saying, y'all need to come. You need to come. You need to come to those who were bidden. Those who were of the Jewish um, lineage. Those who were children of Israel. He's, he's calling them, trying to get them to come from prophet to prophet. But it says they would not come. Verse 4 said again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. He said, Listen, I'm sending more servants. See how he wants reconciliation? They rejected me, but I'm going to keep sending servants to them. I'm going to keep sending servants. So I'm look, I got everything ready for you. I prepared the perfect meal. The fatling and the oxen are killed, everything's ready. Uh, all you got to do is just come to the supper. Come on, I'm ready for you. Come on. Verse 5 said, but they made light of it and went their way. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. They went on business as usual, hustling, doing what they do. They made light of it. Oh, yeah, we the chosen. Okay, God wants us, but yeah, well, we'll, we'll come to him later. He'll be there. You know, he's our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Nisi. He's all these things, but right now I'm just doing me. He said they made light of it. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. See, after a while, when you hear the truth so much and the Lord keeps pulling on you, you start to get mad with them saints. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. At first, it's kind of good to hear. And it's like, oh, God wants me. He loves me. I know. I'm going to try. I know he got a plan for my life. But then you want to continue in errors of sin and keep playing. And after a while, it becomes it starts to nag you a little bit. It starts to aggravate you. You know, you, you strain at a gnat, you swallow a camel because they, they keep coming to you telling you that God wants to save you. God needs you to change. You need to let go of sin. You need to forsake it. And then you start to get angry with the saints. And, and in this case, they got mad. They started treating them spitefully. They slew some. They started cutting up. They, 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 they treated them wrong because they were tired of them telling them the truth of God's word. Poor Micaiah got struck in the face, thrown in prison. But the king said he never prophesied good concerning me. It says, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then said he to the servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and the hedges. I'm sorry. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So now he's going to know. I need y'all to go out. We want the highways and the hedges. We're going everywhere we can to try to win those to the kingdom. It says that, that he could have he could have scrapped the project after the first lot and he destroyed them and burned the city. He could have said, well, that's it. I'm done. I've tried. I'm not doing it anymore. But he desires reconciliation. Be ye reconciled to God today, people. He says, go to the highways and as many as you find, invite them 
Invite them, have them to come. Is it so the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind them hand and foot, and take them away, and cast them out into, into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. So we see that they went out, and they brought in all they could to come. And they were good and bad up in there. But he saw one didn't have on a wedding garment. You came, knowing you were coming to a wedding, you were bidding. Knowing there was a feast for a great king, but you didn't prepare yourself. You didn't put on the right garments. You came in wearing something that you shouldn't have had on. And he said, how you coming here not having on a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. He said, okay. He told him servants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. They'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And if you want to be reconciled and you want to move up higher and you want to be chosen by God, you're going to have to answer the call. Repent of your sins. Be obedient to the things that he's telling you to do. Walk in newness of life so that you can hear well done, my good and faithful servant, upon Jesus' most triumphant return. I pray that you were blessed by this Bible study tonight, that you have a heart to be reconciled to God should you not know him in the free pardon of sin. And we're going to pray that prayer for you tonight. And for those who are saved, join in the group me in prayer for the unsaved, that God will reconcile them and that they will walk in newness of life, that they too could be saved and partake of this great plan of salvation. Let us be agreed. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that you didn't just throw man away, but you desire to be reconciled. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, if there be any, Father God, watching this, they may be bound in sin. Maybe they're bound by drug addiction or bound um, through lust or whatever the enemy has over them. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you give them a space of repentance that they may be able, Father God, to escape the snare of the enemy and that they may be able to walk in newness of life. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, if there are those, Father God, who have struggled in their salvation, may you strengthen them, Lord. May they go out into the highways and hedges and try to win others, Lord, to the kingdom. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would prepare the ground, Father God, that we may go out and plant the seeds and that, Lord, they may be able to grow and bring 30-fold, 50-fold, some 100-fold. And, Lord, that you would be well pleased with our work. Lord, bless, Father God, as only you can, Father. Keep us, Father God, until your sons return. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that your blood would just cover us, Father God. And that, Lord, the sin, Father God, that, Lord, would try to separate us or draw us out. May you bind it and keep it far from us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you, saints, is our prayer. Have a good one. Thanks again for tuning in to Church of God Mission YouTube Live. For more information, please visit us at cogmission.org. And if you'd like to be a part of this mission, please leave us a message so that we can contact you. And may the grace of God and sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each heart until we meet again.